the regular stuff we buy in the store. Absolutely. And sometimes we wonder if it's worth the cost. Absolutely it is. Okay. I, I, that's all I like to use mm -hmm. at my restaurant almost exclusively when it's available. Mm -hmm. um, to me, there's a difference in flavor, and there's a huge difference in nutritional value. Well, we're going to show you that, which I think is very exciting. Um, I love that you, you made these comparisons here so we can uh, start. It's what fun do you, you want to start with the eggs? Or Let's you start with go? the eggs. Okay. Eggs are probably the thing I use most in the kitchen. They're a chef's most invaluable tool. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, I want to get good quality eggs. And the first thing you're going to notice is the difference in color. And it's a misnomer that the different color means different nutritional value. That's not true. Which the is the organic egg? Is it the brown that's one? That's the brown one, but that doesn't, it doesn't mean it's have more healthy. Yeah, some organic eggs are not brown. Some organic eggs are not brown. It right. the, the brown color is like the color of hair on a, on a person. It's just depending upon the genetics of the chicken. Do, so. you, do they, look, they look different inside? They do look different inside. You see how this one is so pale? Mm -hmm. That's the store-bought one. Pale means no nutritional value hmm. or older. Hmm. This one's the, star, the fresh one from the farm. So you see that bright orange yolk. It's got great nutritional value. I've seen even darker yolks than this some in, of them in are, some organic eggs. It's, yeah. it's really eye-opening. Um, Almost that, orange. So, yes, it means it's better for you. Yes, these are cage-free okay. eggs. They're coming from cage-free chickens. So they're eating all organic feed and um, grass mostly and other vegetables. And so there's going to be lower cholesterol in there and higher omega-3 fatty, acid, uh, uh, fatty acids. So good okay. stuff. We're going to compare the meats now, huh? Yes. Now, this is one of the things that I think is the biggest thing. Most processed meats like bacon and sausage are loaded with fillers and other bad things for you. Yeah. Um, by getting them from an organic farm, they're using all organic and not bad for you. Fill There's no fillers. So you've which got is which? your bacon right here on the right-hand side for you, uh -huh. which would be left-hand side for the audience. This is the good stuff? That's the good stuff. Okay. It's almost like a ham to me. Mm -hmm. It's meaty. Nice. And not as salty. It doesn't, does it really look different? I mean, I don't know. A little know. bit. You'll find that they're not as uniform when you get them out of the bag. You'll mm -hmm. have some that are really fat, some that are really skinnier. They're not all exactly the same. So. This is more flavor, honestly. Yeah, the, I think or, so. the organic one. And, and I'm not okay. I'm not brainwashed, just a little. So this is the <laughs> we're not trying to brainwash sausage. you either, I'm not right? Brainwashed. Okay. So the organic sausage is the big thing. Hot dogs and things like that. They're basically the the last cuts that they want to use of a, of the pig. So you're getting a really good quality sausage there with basically organic. brown sugar and spices. There's mm -hmm. nothing else in there. Mm -hmm. It's nice. really good stuff. But we're so. not saying sausage is necessarily good for you, even, even if it's organic. Right. You're probably not going to want, well, you could eat the bacon every day. I'm, I'm a bacon freak, so mm -hmm. call me kooky. Let me try this one. Yeah. Okay, now what's, what kind, okay. of, what kind now, is this? Just regular? That's just a regular. Yeah, I don't know if I should name brand names because I don't want to single anybody out. So, <laughs> but the organic is, is very nice. It tastes um, more meaty, actually, more yeah. real. Yeah, as opposed to less spices and sugar and salt and other things that are added. It in tastes like flavor. a bunch of junk in that one. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> score for score for organics. Yeah. Um, and I should also say this is all from Meadowhaven Organic Farm. They all donated Meadowhaven all this. Organic. Where are they? They are a mile north of us in Sheffield, Illinois. Okay. So they're Good. within the viewing audience. Um, okay, ground beef I think is the big thing. Grass fed organic beef is much, much healthier than um, the beef you get in regular grocery stores. Is that stores. this one? That is this one. Okay. Um, and the, the big thing is, again, they are higher in omega-3 fatty acids, much lower in cholesterol, even more so in, in some cases than chicken or pork. It's not going to look different, is it? Do you think it a looks different bit. from that? It looks a little bit different. It has a little bit less fat than a traditional mm -hmm. corn-fed beef, okay. so it okay. has a little less marbling. Mm -hmm. That's the main difference. And you'll really notice that in, in cuts like steaks, fillets, Prime ribs, that type of thing. So this is our regular ground that's beef. That's our regular ground beef, and then that's going to be the organic one. Okay, so what are we comparing? We haven't looked back here. The, this is your... This is your ground beef that comes in the package there. Mm -hmm. This is the pork links. They come just all bundled up in a little package These are the here. organics, uh-huh. And then the bacon. The and bacon comes like this. You can kind of see from the back of the bacon how irregular they are. Yeah. So it's not uniformly cut. They didn't, you know, stamp them out of a machine. Stamp them out of a machine, okay. exactly. So right. pork chops, they do pork loins as well. But to me, the pork is the single biggest thing. Their pork is marbled. It has fat in it. That's this one? That's, yeah, okay. on the bone. Mm -hmm. And you can see even the difference in color. And I think that's probably slightly unfair. But this one's sort of grayish, white looking. Because you cooked it that way. No. <laughs> Just kidding. These were cooked identical. Oh, all right. And exactly the same method. But why is it grayer? That's because they have absolutely no fat in it. It's been bred out of it. There's just no nutritional value in mm. it. It's been bred okay. that way. All right, now, uh, chicken. Chicken. We buy a lot of chicken in this country. Yes, we do. Yeah. Main thing that I think I mentioned when we first got here, look at the size. And is this the, this is the store-bought? That's a store-bought chicken. It's, he's nice and plump and hormone-filled. Yes, right? exactly. Okay. So look at this nice little cute tender chicken there. And 
I, unfortunately, we don't have smell o vision so I can't convey the smell of it when it's cooking. But if I could, that's the biggest thing with the chicken,、mm. the scent of the chicken when it's cooking. It、that's、has this wonderful,、chicken. sweet, incredible scent to it. Is、so. that this? Is this like just a yep, breast here? That's、or? just the boneless, skinless breast.、Mm-hmm. And I'll say they're not cheap. That's true. But you're getting a, you're gonna pay definitely、more. worth your money for sure. And this is a whole chicken? This is a, a duck. A duck.、Oh. They actually have duck as well.、Okay. They don't do as much of the duck, but they do have them. And I happen to love duck. So it's just、right. something else that they do. So. so we're telling you, if your budget allows, try organics,、yes. especially when it comes to the meat and the eggs. I, I look at it this way: pay more now for good quality food versus paying now for the doctor later. I forgot to mention this: some kind of turkey on steroids?、Yeah. No, that is a free-range organic turkey. Not、That's、on the, steroids. Not on steroids. It's the biggest turkey I think I've ever seen. Thirty-one pounds. Pound. Huge. Wow. So they even have those for you yes, know. Yes, and now the they're、holidays. gearing up for turkey season right now.、All、so、right. if anybody wants to get one for Thanksgiving, they got to order them like ASAP. This is a great organic lesson. Very nice. Very nice, Monica. Okay, now we're going to come back and we're going to talk about. Planning a menu. Yes. Sometimes that's the toughest thing. It's daunting. It is、Two、trying to come up with、it. stuff. Right, right. So we're going to help you with that when we come back. We're asking the expert in the PSO kitchen today. Stick around. Load it, haul it, or tow it. You can do it all, Iowa and Illinois, in a new Chevy Silverado. It's the season of doing, and you'll do more with six thousand dollars in total value savings on Chevy Silverado All Star Edition. Get V8 power with the best fuel economy of any full size pickup, and Chevy's one hundred thousand mile five year warranty. Test drive Silverado at your select Chevy dealer today. It's the number one selling truck in Iowa and Illinois. Hurry, this great offer won't last long. So at our company, we pay about the same, even though I'm a great driver and he's not so much. Well, for a driver like you, I would recommend our new Snapshot discount. This little baby keeps track of your great driving habits, so you can save money. Amazing! It's like an extra bonus savings. <laughs> he's my ride home. How much can the Snapshot discount save you? Call or click today. How would you like to win a free tank of gas? Better yet, how about a free tanker full of gas? Play Chumer's Tanker Full of Fuel giveaway now through October 20th, and you could win seven. Let's show our kids today how to eat healthier and exercise more. Let's move to raise a healthier generation. Whether it's reading with our kids, making sure their homework gets done, or attending those parent-teacher conferences, parents play a critical role in helping our kids succeed in school. So this year, let's do our best so our kids can do their best. At Window World, we pride ourselves on being home of the original 189 installed window. That's right. Our window pricing always includes standard installation, unlike those other guys. Call or stop by Window World today and find out why we are simply the best for less. Sell with Ask the Expert. In this case, Chef Monica from、uh, Chestnut Street Inn in Sheffield. Monica is helping us really in the real world. Even though you don't think you can do it,、um, plan your menus. Do something different when it comes to parties or just you know everyday dinner. Even just your family dinner on Saturday or Sunday evening. Yes, can be stressful because most people are not accustomed to cooking for more than just the four or the five people no, in your family. No, and that's、so. why we end up saying let's just go out. Right. Which is there's nothing wrong with that. No, nothing wrong we, with we, that. Yeah, <laughs> but. But we like to cook at home sometimes. So well, yeah, it's fun to entertain. I, I always、yeah. like enjoy,、um, inviting people over to my house. That's how I got started. I didn't get started as a chef. I got started as somebody wanting to host dinner parties.、Right. So、um, main thing I think that makes it easier for people is to pick a theme. 
All right. So, and that was something that I did in my cookbook. I organized everything by theme. So, and by that, I mean pick Spanish tapas or pick Italian or pick Greek. Come up with a theme and then go from there. Use use cookbooks. And we all have yes. a bunch of cookbooks we never look at. Yeah. And how many people subscribe to magazines and then never read them? So, you know, your gourmets, your food, food network magazines, Rachel Ray magazines, whatever you like to read. Rachel Ray's magazine is very good, by the way. It, they've got a lot of great ideas. Every day with Rachel Ray. Her stuff is real, very real world. Well, and it's stuff yeah. that, that everybody can do. Yeah. Sometimes the gourmet stuff is daunting. So, um, computers. Most people have a, has a computer at home. There are a million websites that you can go on to, to find recipes. Um, you, there's a ton of apps on your iPhones and your on smartphones. The, there's, there's the Food Network. That happens have that? to be the Food Network one, yeah. Mm -hmm. But there mm -hmm. are apps that you can download to your, uh, com your phones for free, and they'll give you recipes for anything. So, come you up like, with a theme. You like lists. And yes. I like that, too. If I don't make a list, it doesn't happen. Exactly. And that's yeah. the single most important thing. I know people probably have an aversion to lists because of school, but that's a really good way to keep, keep organized. I print out every recipe, and then depending upon how many people I'm inviting, mm -hmm. um, I will look at how many that normally serves and then multiply it. So I'm saying this was for 16 people. I picked a Moroccan-themed menu, shocking, and I've got about seven recipes. Each one of these serves about eight, so I need two times for each one. Shopping in the store. This is the other part. I yes. like the way you do this. By category, yes. before you go to the supermarket. You will inevitably forget something if you're not organized. So go by meat department, dairy department, baking aisle, produce, produce canned goods, mm -hmm. dried goods. Go by what your grocery store has and where you know Good. you can generally find stuff. And every grocery store is different. So that's Otherwise, you are back and forth in that store. And then you have to send your husband back to the store for sour cream. Because you still forgot. Right? Yep, exactly. So okay. another quick thing is keeping organized in terms of time. You may not want to do everything last minute. That's daunting, and that takes all the fun out of it because then you can't enjoy the party. So mm -hmm. what can you do in advance? I usually will plan on a daily basis. I'll come up, what can I do with two days in advance? How, what can I, you know, chop my vegetables, roast my vegetables, mm -hmm. um, assemble the dessert ahead, which keeps for two or three days. Mm -hmm. What can I do in advance to get it done? What are my limitations in the kitchen? Okay. Okay, you, you're going to pick recipes that are all in the oven and you only have one oven, you're going to have a problem. And don't pick recipes that require special equipment. If I don't have a tagine, for example, I'm not going to pick a tagine to make. Uh, a who? What a is tagine? Who is this? this is a Moroccan cooking implement. You know tagine? I mm -hmm. happen to have one. You may not. You may want to buy one. This is a good excuse to do it. Or you may want to buy a blowtorch. That's a good excuse to make creme brulee so you can buy a blowtorch. What you're talking about now, though, Monica, is, is these themed dinners. Like, yes. This would mainly be for a special occasion or if you're having people over. Well, but even even just for a regular everyday dinner, sometimes okay. it's nice to theme it. and make it makes It actually makes it easier on you. Like a pretty plan. bread basket. Pretty bread know. basket. Mm -hmm. This happens to be a Moroccan themed setup. So I've got my tagines and my teapots and my Moroccan set with my plate. And you could do this with any theme. If you're doing an Asian setting, you could go to Dollar General and buy some red bowls and black bowls and do mix and match. Or you could go to Sur La Table and find all kinds of ethnic Mexican things. Mexican is, a, is a, good, um, yes. a good theme that a lot of people want to do if they're just going to do tacos. Exactly. Yeah. So you can go get, um, mm -hmm. and they look similar to this, the little tortilla baskets and things like that. So. All right. Great tips. Very nice, Monica. All right. Uh, next, are we doing soups? Yes. Oh, soups. You know, it's soup time of year. It is, finally. So we're going to help you put together the best fresh ingredients for homemade soup. It's not that hard. That's what she says. Easiest thing on the planet. So we'll, we'll see you when we come right back. Stick around. For the bears, it's dinner time. But these...
Kitchen today with Monica Sudikoff, who just told me she has created about 800 recipes. 30 or 40 or 50 of them are soups. Ish. Ish. Oh, you can come up with more than that. I know that. The, the opportunities are endless. Look at the table. Soup is great. I mean, and, it and it's a good way to, to uh, experiment with homemade fresh ingredients, Yes, right? it is. There's yeah? absolutely no reason to open a can of soup. Sorry. Okay. All right. But sorry, soup companies. Sorry, soup companies. There's okay. no reason to. Yes, it takes time. There's no way to, gut, to shortcut this. You have to take time to make a soup. But you can let it stew while you're doing other things in the house. Right. So, um, so you, we have the steps. Yes. Now, this is going to this is going to help. Even though I know this looks daunting, but you're going to show me how we start. Okay. Always start with a fat, whether you're using olive oil or butter, whatever your preference is. I use olive oil because it cuts down a little bit on the okay. on the fat on it. And then you're always going to use what I call the mirepoix, which I know I have mentioned to you. Before. Before. Show them all there. Onions, celery, carrots, and garlic. Okay, so you, that is the basis for every kind of soup. Every soup, doesn't matter what you're going to do with the rest of it. All Always right. have that. It gives it your basic layering of flavors. So you toss your onions in there. Okay. Add up your garlic. Throw so you in just your put, carrots you and your celery. You just put in these huge cloves. Is that, you didn't break them up? You don't have to. You can. If you want a stronger garlic flavor, chop it up real fine. Okay. If you want a mild garlic flavor, leave it whole. Okay, fine. So, celery. Mm -hmm. Toss that in there. Now, what kind of soup do you want? Do you want a broccoli soup? Do you want a butternut squash soup? Mm -hmm. Do you want a lentil soup? Do you want a bean soup? Do you so want a tomato soup? You don't mind using these cans? No. You need to rinse them properly. Rinse to these rin beans. Okay. Yeah. Because you have to drain them and rinse them to eliminate the sodium. Okay. okay. I would say, let's make something colorful. Colorful. Bright. Bright. Let's go ahead and do some roasted peppers and sun-dried tomatoes. How's oh, that? All right. Now, the thing about this is any vegetable you get, whatever thing? you like, go for it. Okay. Whatever you like, you can use in here. You're not limited by anything. So. All right. Perfect. I love well, sun-dried tomatoes. So do I. And they're so good for you. They are good for mm -hmm. you. I am like a bean. All right. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and stir that in. Mm -hmm. Now, you got your vegetable choice. You got your base. That is. Now, this has got to cook forever. Nope, about 45 minutes. Oh, well, Soups, that's not forever. About 45 minutes or so. All right. Now we got to add flavorings. Okay. You always want to do basically salt and pepper, but... The other things you're going to add to that, if you want a French soup, you'd maybe do some bay leaf and herbe de Provence. If you want an Italian soup, you would do maybe some fresh basil and Italian seasoning. Mm -hmm. A Mexican soup, maybe some chipotles with some jalapeno, fresh jalapeno and cilantro and mm -hmm. cumin. Middle Eastern soup, you might do some cumin and paprika. You might do an Asian-inspired soup and throw some coconut milk in there with some fresh ginger and maybe some garam masala or curry. Let's go French. Yeah, all right. Toss okay. this guy in here. So, so that includes, I'm sorry, not, not harissa. That's, no. no, that goes in Middle Eastern. We can throw okay. it in the French. It gives a good flavor. But so just a nice basic fresh herb de Provence. So it ha has nice. your little lavender and everything in there. Mm -hmm. But the point being, same ingredients, totally different flavor. Sure. Just depending upon what, what you feel like throwing in there. Wow, that's neat. And that's, that's neat. it. Now, I always, always add a little bit of either wine or beer. Basically, the reason for okay. that is, A, gives a good flavor, so let's just say the sherry would be the French choice there. Okay, wine or beer? Yeah, your choice. The or wine is more traditional, but... There are people who don't like to cook with alcohol at right. all. So what would you recommend for them? You could use a little bit of lemon juice for that Lemon instead. juice, okay. But the point is, the acidity in the wine or in the beer will actually help to um, tenderize the vegetables. How much sherry? Oh, let's see. Julia Child version of mine. Glug, glug, That's glug. That's probably good. Is that enough? Yeah. Okay. So About what? a quarter of a cup to half a cup. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Um, and that's really kind of to taste. And then you let that reduce. Mm -hmm. And what that's called is deglazing the pan. You get those little crunchy bits on the bottom, and yeah. you want to scrape those up with the wine, and it gets all that flavor into the soup and nice. gives it a nice, robust flavor. Okay. Now, your liquid, generally broth of some kind. If you're mm -hmm. not going to make your own from scratch, you want to get, there's plenty of good options out there for these broths. These are good. Yep. These are all good ones. All right. Pacifica, Kitchen Basics. If you want it vegetarian, use a vegetable stock. If you want it non-vegetarian, chicken stock. All right. Toss that in there. Okay, so we've got that next. Yep, we've got that next. Cover your pan. Oh, he's not open there. Perfect. There we go. Cover your pan. Let that simmer for 45 minutes. All right. And then that's it. And does it need to be kind of simmer, like a little boil, a little boil? Bring it to a boil and then reduce the heat okay. down to a good medium, medium low, and that'll run for about 45 minutes. All right. Then, that, pretend that's done through the magic of television. It's done? Yeah. My. My gosh, I'm it's not. amazing how uh -huh. that works. Um, so, the last thing you do is finish it off. Now, you could leave this a nice chunky soup. Nothing wrong with that. You've got a cream. If you're going to do French style, you're going to use cream and your little immersion blender and puree up the soup. Well, you're, we're not doing that now because no, but it's you not could. Um, if you were making it vegetarian, you could add just a little zing of lemon juice at the very end. Okay. Or if you wanted to, like, if you were adding the beer, you'd make some cheese at the end of it and that make a beer and cheese soup What out did of it. you make for us today? I've got three soups. This is a carrot and ginger soup. So this would be your Asian flair with mm -hmm. your coconut milk. Mm-hmm. 
That's good, even cold. I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's lovely. Most of the soups actually can be served cold. Okay. Um, the one in the middle there, that is the beer and cheese soup. Okay. Oh, beer and cheese. Now it's probably more on the French style. It's got there the mm -hmm. Provence and the, a little bit of paprika in there for zing. Wow, that does zing. Yeah, just a little cheek in the back of your throat. That's nice. And then the third one, which is actually my favorite, that's the roasted pepper and tomato soup, and that one's going to have a little bit of a Middle Eastern flair to it. Mm -hmm. A little cumin, paprika, cilantro, now these all, all that good creamy. stuff. creamy. Yes. They're not necessarily. They don't necessarily have any cream in them. Uh, no, not right? necessarily. Um, actually, this one does not. That one has coconut milk in it. Um, mm -hmm. The beer and cheese soup just has um, the cheese in it. Cheese. That one does have a little cream in it. But you don't have to. Creaminess comes from pureeing, which then actually makes it a healthier soup. You're giving the creaminess through the vegetables being pureed up. So just a little bit of time in advance, yep. you know, and just shopping for your ingredients and get them out and get, exactly. the, get that cooked down. Exactly. And having some of these spices on hand. You okay. can get small quantities. A lot of stores will sell you just mm -hmm. a small quantity of it, like the health markets and whatnot. You'll share the recipes with us for Absolutely. For these soups? That'd you be bet. great. Right. All right. So now, I think the most um, complex, it seems to me a complex dessert that yes. everybody loves to order in a restaurant is creme brulee. Yes, they do. It's one of your specialties. It's my favorite thing to make. And so you're going to show us how to make it pretty easily, it right? Is. It so is. You need one special tool, but we'll show you what that is when we come we'll, We're going to demystify the creme brulee with Chef Monica. You better stick around. We're coming right back. Day here. Thursday, 73 degrees. A low temperature, by the way, Thursday night, getting a little on the cold side, down to 47 by early Friday morning, and then cooling off even more than that, possibly upper 30s to lower 40s by early Saturday. That with the coldest core of air overhead, highs likely only going to make the mid and lower 60s, but at least we stay dry. I guess we have that going for us here Thursday, Friday, all the way through Monday of next week, and it looks like it'll be a longer term type trend where we could see sunshine continuing all the way until Wednesday. You can become a medical assistant with training at MTI. Students will learn in a classroom and clinical setting and receive real-world hands-on training during their externship. This approach gives our graduates the skill set needed to be successful as a medical assistant. MTI students come to us ready to work. They definitely know what they're doing when they come in. We have to do very little hand-holding. They definitely come in prepared and we've had a better work history with the MTI students after higher than we have with other programs. In just 36 weeks, you will have learned the skills necessary to become a medical assistant with training from MTI. I chose MTI because of the short program that they had here and because the instructors were awesome. This program allowed me to get out into the workforce a lot quicker than if I would have chosen another program. To learn more about medical assisting and what MTI has to offer, call us today and join the MTI team. popular restaurant and dessert is the creme brulee. Monica makes a great chocolate one. That's what this one, this one is. And it has that, you know, that, ooh, that nice crusted top. And then this is the one that we're going to show you how to make. Because you say we can do this at home. We think of it as restaurant dessert. Yes, and it's really, there's a couple of little pitfalls you can run into. But mm -hmm. other than that, it's a basic custard recipe. And how okay. many people's grandparents made custard for them when they were kids, right? Well, yeah. So it's okay. easy. Just think grandma right. and you'll be fine. All right, three and three easy steps. Three oh, easy steps. Or four easy. Five. Or maybe five-ish. Okay. So first thing, of course, is the eggs. We've got our great farm fresh eggs. And I use just the yolks. Look at the and color And I mix that. This. Look at the color. Isn't that beautiful? It is gorgeous. Nice, gorgeous, like bright yellow. neon, yeah. And, of course, I mix that with sugar. Okay. And then the component here that you can screw up or mess up there is the cream. Okay. So you can overcook your cream. You can scald it. Just and a heavy whipping cream that's just regular. Heavy whipping like, cream, okay. regular whipping cream. You need to just heat it up till it starts to bubble around the edges. If you overdo it, it'll taste like burnt cream. Ooh, okay. Can't have that. And then if you add that hot cream into your egg yolks too rapidly, you'll end up with scrambled eggs. So those are that's kind of two of the biggest pitfalls right there. Do you want to do this now? Because I know you haven't cooked those eggs. Yeah, we pretend. That, I mean that cream. It's okay. hot. It's perfectly warm. We're gonna pretend it's just right. It's just right. Okay. So so you would want to slowly add, and it helps to have a friend in the kitchen to do that. Yes. Yeah, so if like she's, if she's whisking constantly while you're pouring, then that see, works out well. See the real slow trickle. Real slow trickle and just incorporating it. Uh -huh. And then what you can do from here, we'll go ahead and just add it all in there. Once right. it comes up to temperature, it'll add in really easily. Okay. Okay. 
Then you can make a plain creme brulee, and that's perfect as it is. Okay. Then you can add extra stuff to it, flavors. You can do a chocolate creme brulee. You would throw the chocolate chips in with your cream to mm -hmm. heat up, to melt that's, that's, what, that's what you love to do. I love throwing the I'm chocolate gonna, in there. I'm going to grab this one. And there's always a little booze in there. I think that one has a little bit of the um, Chambord. Okay. Um, you could do De Serono, the almond liqueur. You could use the Kahlua. Always a little coffee in there for a little uh, contrast and flavor. Look at, the that one, little, look at that little crust. That's a beautiful thing. That is a beautiful right? thing. The crust is the key there. We'll get to that in a second. Um, you could make this a cinnamon and orange blossom, or cinnamon and rose water. I'm going to do the chocolate water, dance. I'm doing the chocolate, the chocolate Oh, okay. Now we'll stop. Fly Full. off camera. Okay. So this is mango. You're going to do tropical creme brulee. Okay. The only thing that you have to keep in mind, if you're going to add liquid to the base, you have to subtract that amount of cream. So if you're adding a half a cup of the pureed mango, you need to eliminate half a cup of cream. That sounds good. Mango brulee? I cream made brulee? it before, and you throw a little bit of cinnamon in there, and it's Ooh. delicious. Woo, a lot of cinnamon. <gasps> Just fly. Just throw it everywhere. It's kind of like and a little, is that little vanilla. Vanilla, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Now, no matter how perfect you are and how well you incorporated that cream, there's still going to be little chunks and stuff down on the bottom. So here's the next key. You've got to strain this mixture. Strain it? Yep. Oh, so okay. send it through a little strainer into your measuring cup. Okay. Here we go. See, now, right away, people are going looking at this step, Monica, and saying, A strainer? What? You I'm just going to a restaurant. Nah, strainer's easy. That's right. it. Okay, so that's all there is to it. And then you take this... Spread it out through your little measuring cups okay. in your little Pyrex. Uh -huh. And once you get them all divvied up, you need to bake these in a hot water bath, which simply means you take, you can just even take hot water from your tap. We put it, you see, it's in a big pan like this. You put your water in the, the put bath your part. Put your water in the bath part. And why you're doing this is because it creates a steam bath mm -hmm. and it makes your custard a lot more tender and it doesn't crack. So that gets baked? That gets baked. Okay. And I bring you out through the magic of television, the da -da -da. finished product. Um, first, you have this to one? cool it. Mm -hmm. And then you cover it, and it has to chill for three hours. That's it. But you can make this in advance. It'll keep for a week in the refrigerator. How do I turn this on? We'll go like this. Fun part is the fire part. This is an excuse to go to Menards and to the hardware department. I've never done this. Push the button. As you, can you tell? Right here. This okay. one right here. Beautiful. I'm afraid of fire. Okay, it's here awesome. we go. All right, let's fire that baby up. Now, how long do you... What if you don't have one of these? Menards, 20 bucks. All right. Good stuff. Is that enough? A little bit more. Good deal. You're good. Look at look at that. Lovely. And make sure you use granulated sugar on there. But it's that's it. See, this is granulated Super sugar used. And that's how you make the creme brulee that has the, the true crust on top. Yep. And um, the big thing too I want to mention a lot this. of times you'll see them in a flat bowl. Yeah. That's kind of traditional to do them in the flat bowl. Okay. I like the thicker ramekins, the deeper ramekins, because wow. you get more custard to the crunch. You taught us so much today. Yay! Thank you so much, My Monica. Wow. So we have the creme brulee. We have uh, the soup recipes and, you know, the uh, the tips on menu planning, which we think that you'll be able to use and really will find practical, especially when you go to shop mm -hmm. for uh, for a party or any kind of, you know, special thing you're doing. And um, and the organics. Try them out. Try Give them it a out. whirl. So uh, I'm going to th thank you, Monica. Good job. My pleasure. Good Thanks job. For Thanks for watching today's PSL. Have a great evening.